Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk with Teresa Ann. This is one of my favorite episodes because I get to have none other than Carrie Robina from Minnesota. She will be joining in my studio via technology, which I love, via B Live TV. So I want to first give you an introduction to who Carrie Robina is, and her information will be below. She is a health and wellness entrepreneur, as well as a very well-known podcaster. She's been in the broadcast journalism world for over 20 years, both in TV and radio, but I also wanted to let you know of her podcast called She Walks in Truth. Amazing, powerful, and always points us back to the Father. So without any further ado, I want to introduce you to my special guest, Carrie Robina. It's your copy mug, girl. I do have coffee. Yes. I do have coffee in mine, so there we go. I love it. Well, I want to say thank you for your time, Carrie. I know you have a very busy schedule, and I'm just so honored that you can be here today. But let's just cut to the chase, okay? So, Carrie, welcome to Let's Talk with Teresa Ann. Thank you. It is such an honor to be here. When you invited me to be on, I I was so excited. And I just love what you are doing with, uh, you know, in your space of television and YouTube and the guests that you've had on are phenomenal. And so I am just, I'm so grateful to be here. Man, I, I have to tell you really quick, like before I ask you some questions, last night, I went to bed listening to your podcast. Your the last one you just posted of the struggles, of, you know what you learned through the struggles, and oh my gosh, that was powerful. For those of you who can see next to her name is her website, shewalksintruth.com. Please go to that, um, click on the tab podcast, and you will be able to catch that interview or or that actual podcast. Um, but with that said, it's obvious that your passion is media, but what compelled you to go the broadcast journalism route? And what, before that, what's your testimony um, of your encounter with Jesus? Yes, well, I was raised in a home that was God-fearing and God-loving, which is definitely a gift. So we weren't afraid to talk about God, went to church every single Sunday and went to religion class every single Tuesday. And I learned prayers and memorized certain things, which was awesome and was a gift. Um, I, I will say, though, that I had a tendency to think that my relationship with Lord or hit the Lord or his love for me was based on those things that I was doing of going to church, of taking communion, of going and serving here, of going to Sunday school or to religion class every Tuesday. And I didn't know God in a personal way. It's cool to know that I had a fear of the Lord because I think sometimes we don't talk enough about the fear of the Lord. But I will say that on the outside, because of the things I was doing, I looked like I was a great believer, that I knew the Lord and kind of probably a goody two-shoes. I was involved in so many different things from being in the musicals, in orchestra, in student government, in cheerleading, things like that in my high school years. And I really was hurting on the inside because I didn't know that my worth was found in a relationship with Jesus. And that's why I'm so passionate that women know that today and young women know that because I was promiscuous. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I was looking for it with boys. Mm. And it was not a good thing. And so anyway, that continued 
until I met my husband. I will say that I did move to New York City three weeks after I turned 18. This was in the early 90s, no internet, no cell phones. I literally had two suitcases in hand. My parents couldn't afford to go with me. And I show up at my apartment in school in New York City. It would never change that. I mean, had an amazing experience. But I do feel like the Lord had me grieve some of the things that I was seeing. And I didn't know this at the time, but I believe that he, he saved me from that. Because I could have gone down a completely different path than I am now, honestly, if I had stayed. And so I moved back home to western Kansas. My mom ended up getting sick with cancer shortly after that and passed away within six weeks and I was only 20 at that time and so that was the first really turning point in my walk with the Lord because I was again when she when we were at her funeral and at her wake and her memorial service it was like we were saying all these prayers thinking that those prayers were going to help her get to heaven or somehow give give us an extra jewel or something in our crown like it was even works based in that and there's nothing I love prayer don't get me wrong but I began to think well okay what is this correlation here between the prayer and this and no one close to me have ever died before so we'll fast forward I ended up studying after my mom passed away I did I actually did some semi-professional theater for a year and then I went to school at the University of London for the summer to study playwriting, saw some crazy things that I was like, I don't know that this is the life I want. So I ended up going to the University of Kansas and started out studying theater. Again, just saw some things that I was like, I really don't know that this is the path. So I switched to broadcast journalism, fell absolutely in love with it. My senior year, I met my husband, Ricardo, who is an immigrant from Uruguay. He'd only been in the U.S. three weeks, three months when I met him. Anyway, he invited me to his church. And let me tell you, I grew up in churches of, you know, like chapels and cathedrals of just ornate things. Yeah. And so he invites me to church with him. And it's literally in the cafeteria of a high school with these folding chairs. And the stage was, I don't even know what the stage was made of. And so I was kind of thinking, and there are people eating, drinking coffee and donuts and when I was raised, like, you couldn't eat an hour before you went and got um, the Eucharist, before you got communion. Like, you couldn't eat before church. And so I was like, they're eating and drinking in church, and oh my gosh, what's going on here? But Teresa Ann, the music started, and I heard the strum of the guitar, and they were singing songs that were just, like, my heart just soared. And I literally felt at that point that chains broke off of my wrist, chains of religiosity, chains of um, doubt. And so I just praised God and I knew that I could have a personal relationship with Jesus. They shared the gospel at that service. And then there were people at that church that were discipling my husband and I as um, newly married and then even when we were dating. And it made all the difference in the world. Were you still in the journalism uh, world? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I was. And I look back at God's favor and his grace in that realm because I'm somebody who is, who I'm, I'm all in. I always have been. If I'm going to give you my commitment, I am going to be all in for it. And so when I studied journalism, once I got a hold of um, that, I, that that was something I wanted to do. Now, this is pre having a personal relationship with the Lord, but he was beginning to press things on my heart. Like I joined the chastity club at my church, you know, this was, but I didn't have a personal relationship at that time with the Lord, I feel. Um, but he was just doing all these things But I've always just been somebody that you commit. That's one thing my parents instilled in me is you've got to let your yeses be yes and your no's be no. And that's the way to honor God. And so I, when I was in, still studying, I went and did internships. Like my friends would party and do other things. And I was like, no, I'm going to do this. And so KU, where I went, is so close to Kansas City. I was like, I'm not going to do the little station here in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm going to go to Kansas City. Like go big or go home. So oh, yeah. I went and applied at a radio broadcasting group there. 
And first they put me on as an intern with their morning show. It was called Oldies 95. It was a total blast. But then they saw my passion, so they hired me on. And so I was working probably 25 to 30 hours a week in radio while I was studying it. And then that opened doors to even be able to go on the air while I was still studying. And then I, I had to do a television kind of internship. And so I did it at a TV station. I was like, I'm going to go big again and do this. And then they ended up hiring me on as well as an associate producer. And it's really just, it's, it's the Lord. I say that I'm all, someone who's all in, but I know it was God steering yeah. um, in my life. So it really wasn't me, but it was just saying, yes, I believe to him without really knowing what mm. that I was saying yes to it. Um, right. So anyway, and then I worked in it after I graduated, of course, and until I started having kids, I worked in promotions as well. But I will say that having my first child, I was still working in radio in Kansas City, and the radio group kind of changed formats a little bit. And so they were asking me to work on a rock format, and I love rock music, but I wasn't comfortable with where they were wanting me to go to remote broadcasts. Yeah. <laughs> to Teresa Ann to make it one point and it was we're going to be going to a strip club to do a remote broadcast and at that point I told my my husband Ricardo I can't I can't be in radio anymore I I can't do this and so at that time I did know the Lord and so I, I stepped back from something that I absolutely loved oh wow I couldn't do that so in between there, my husband and I um, then, you know, lived in, we've lived in Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, and in Texas, I got certified to teach radio and television. I was down in Laredo, Texas at a fine arts school, and I was able to run a radio and TV program oh, and as a teacher sure. for the school district. And so that was an amazing experience in and of itself. The, the podcast started a year ago, but previous to that, three years before it started, I went through something called Messenger Boot Camp here in Minneapolis, in Minneapolis, and it was being equipped to share our faith, and be able to speak that truth, and then to know he saved me, and to be able to tell people, share my story, and the brokenness that he saved me from in my own life, and it really just created a passion for sharing my faith as a lifestyle no matter where it's at my kids know that if we go to target or wherever and mom starts talking to a stranger and closing her eyes or laying hands on them or something okay you know we just we're in for a while or whatever you know it's just crazy. yeah and so with she walks in truth i knew that i wanted to start a podcast and because the lord told me i was going to i tried a couple years before that to start a business podcast, did some great interviews, but that wasn't me. I had a business coach saying, I really think that you should include your media skills. You're not just a health and wellness type of person, but it wasn't the right fit. So again, I was just willing to put on the brakes, even though I loved it, and I stopped. And I waited on God, not saying because I'm super smart, it's because only because of his grace. And yes. um, so he told me in the secret place that I was going to be starting it. And I thought, okay, God, how am I going to come up with a name for this thing? I really need you to show me what it is. And I'll never forget, I was driving in my car in the Minnesota winter, making a left-hand turn into unhinged pizza parking lot with my kids. And I felt hurt in the spirit. She walks in truth. And so went in for pizza I checked on my phone really quick. Okay, is this available on Instagram, Facebook, and the domain? And it was. It's like, okay, that's it, Lord. Now what are we going to do? And it was first. And it was very clear that he wanted to share the testimonies of his daughters and to share it as an out, have it as an outreach tool that people could say, like everyday people, people who are watching your awesome show can listen and see the topics. And if they know someone who's struggling with, um, something they can share an episode with somebody else and hopefully they'll hear the gospel hopefully yeah. they'll hear the truth hopefully they'll know that god loves them so here we are <laughs> i love that and you know i loved what you discussed earlier about 
how a lot of these women that you had even interviewed really had never even written out their testimonies before. And so you were even finding that it was really for them to be able to share their gospel story of how God touched their life. I love that because I feel like that's what Let's Talk is about too, where a lot of women just don't feel equipped. They don't feel like, you know, I don't really have a story to share. And then when you start to ask them those questions that you do, they start to find out, oh my God, he was with me when I felt all alone or those moments when he was right there. It really helped me to be more bold in sharing on She Walks in Truth and staying and following through with it, realizing, okay, I'm to be obedient to the Lord in this and I'm not stopping with my purpose or my calling until he says stop and i hope that that's a word to somebody else who is listening today on your show Teresa Ann. if they are so worried about what somebody else thinks of them and god has placed and believe there's somebody who's watching that god has put something on your heart a purpose and a calling and he has equipped you your whole life has led up to this and you can't figure out why you're not stepping in it and i want you to know that the lord is saying to do it, to keep your eyes fixed on him and to know you're doing it as an audience of one. You don't need to have everything figured out. You don't need to worry about the opinions of man. What you need to be concerned about is having the faith to be obedient and to step into it. And then he's going to take you from there. So woo! anyway, (laughs) she walks in truth. Um, What I love about it really the most is there's two things. One, you point me back to the father. I feel like I'm listening it, listening to it. And it's just for me. And you hear these stories of hardships and difficulties that people have gone through. And it literally does get you out of your bubble of what we feel our difficulties are. And I'm not saying that our difficulties aren't counted. But we can see now outside of ourselves and into a life that God is so wanting to be a part of. I, I've got to share this link, everyone, that she just did on her podcast. It is so powerful. You have to listen. I had to listen to it twice. Wow. I, I didn't want to. And I, it, for sure, but I listened to it twice. I picked up on something else. But, um, I wanted to ask you this. There was a part in there that really just like jumped out at me and you were talking about, um, let me see. Let me get my notes here, Carrie. Um, coming into agreement with things that have happened in our life or have been spoken. Can you expound on that for those who haven't heard that podcast yet? So yes. powerful. Yes, absolutely. In our lives, a lot of times things are spoken over us or to us, whether we think, whether it seems to be something that's in passing or something that's from our childhood or something that we um, hear on the radio or something that we hear on a podcast or, you know, wherever it is, sometimes in our hearts, we can come into agreement with that, even if it's not something that's true. And even unintentionally, I realized going through a health struggle that I came into agreement that this is just how it was always going to be for me, that I'm someone who had these issues. And so, you know, even if the doctor's speaking this over me and saying, well, this is how it's going to be it's easy to take that on ourselves and to take that burden on. And that's not what the, that's not the gospel. That's not the Bible. That's not why Jesus died on the cross for us, for us to to take um, untruths from other people or their words or their opinions and carry, hold on to them and to carry them as burdens. And so we have to be very careful what we allow into our ears and, So if I hear something spoken over me now, or I hear it in passing or wherever it is, I'm not going to come into agreement in that. And if, if I need to, just in my spirit, quietly, I will break agreement. Like that's not true for me in the name of Jesus, 
or sometimes verbally, I will say that. And it's a choice. It honestly is a choice to come into agreement with things or not. And God is so good and so gracious that he has given us his word. He has given us all, you know, he's just the Holy Spirit to convict us, the the Holy Spirit to counsel us. He has been so good to us. And so we just, we can't stand in agreement with that thing. And even speaking things into the atmosphere and over other people too, like what are we really saying or if someone is complaining or feeling down are we coming into agreement with their sickness are we coming into agreement with their depression are we coming into agreement with whatever it is they're asking us to pray for or are we going to be women who stand in truth and stand in the gap and break agreement with that and declare the promises of god over somebody's life and say this is what the lord has for you these are the promises of God. And so we've got to focus on the promises of God, not the lie of the enemy. Okay. So Carrie, you're going to be launching a podcast course in March. Can you give us a little sneak peek? Yes, I can tell you what it's about. I am launching it on International Women's Day. And super excited. The Lord has really put a passion for me to teach women some of the more technical aspects of podcasting. And it, originally it's for like women in ministry is what I had in mind. But as I was talking to my friend and your friend, Jennifer Allwood, just a little bit earlier, we were we're tweaking the name. I've been trying to just, okay, Lord, what, what do you want to call us? I've been going back and forth and back and forth. And she was in some quiet time this morning and the Lord told her, you're going to have a one-on-one conversation with somebody today to speak something over them. And we came up with the name. I mean, this is the thing that's been holding back the logo and all of this stuff. So I've known that it's for women and it's also for women in business. I'm very much an entrepreneur or women who ever want to start a podcast in your living room and teach you, hey, sister, I got you. This isn't so hard. You can do this, and let me show you how. So there oh you go. Do you know what I love about it, too, is it's, it's relational, mm. and which is what God is all about anyway, is relationship. And also, it, it puts down all the intimidating walls, mm. you know, like, my gosh what if I don't get this you know that's why a lot of people don't start so excited yeah and so when I launch in March I'm going to be launching with a beta testing group so I'm only going to work with a smaller group of women 20 to 25 people they're going to be able to go ahead and take the course at a very much discounted rate than what I was originally going to launch it as and what I'll launch it um, to after the beta testing. But it's really an opportunity to maybe work more hands-on with me as well and to get your feedback, to get people's feedback on, well, you think I might need this, but really I, I need to learn this. And so I'm really super excited about it. They can sign up and get on the wait list. Of course, I'm going to link to it on She Walks in Truth as well. So those are just a couple ways to get in touch with it. Thank you so much, Carrie, for joining me today on Let's Talk with Teresa Ann. And remember, everyone, that this show is about bold inspiration, revealing God's goodness. And I think that you have seen that Carrie has definitely revealed that. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to my YouTube channel.